podcast select buses. You wait for one for months and then the second one comes along almost instantly. Anyway, this is a football fans podcast and people behind CelticUnderground.net. Well, Light Buses podcast come along in twos and I'm joined this week by two guests as well, esteemed guests. Uh, we have the Peter Alice of the Celtic Underground podcast world. We have Lawrence Donegan. How are you doing, Lawrence? And here we are today now. He's coming very nice. Aren't you? Hi, how are you doing there, Harry? Good to, hear. Good, to hear from you. Good to talk to you. You too. And we also, to continue our 80s uh, TV stars, we also have the Les Dawson of the Celtic <laughs> podcasting world, fresh with uh, all the mother-in-law jokes that, uh, that you, can, you can wish for. We have Eddie Pearson. How are you doing, Eddie Les Dawson Pearson? I won't say my mom was fat, but... <laughs> wait, Actually, wait. I... oh, what, what, I'm sorry, what we, sorry. What are we doing? We're we not doing this already. What, what, what is this? Wait, what? I'm, I'm, did I miss a game? <laughs> I'm <laughs> slept in. Right. We did a podcast on Sunday, right? I and know. Yesterday, right? But very badly edited, by the way. My, the missus, uh, it's really sad. The missus has left me because of that podcast. And what's really sad about it is she has not taken the wings well, right? Because I'm just making a passing comment. Boom, boom. And you put it in. And some of you may have got the mother in law edition, and some of you may not have got the mother in law edition. That tells you what your, your opinion is of us and our opinion is of you. Um, but what, 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 why? What? Is, is this one of those Patreon ones where they give you a proper podcast and then if you pay a fiver a week, they give you the same podcast again, just talking about it a bit later on in the week? What, what are we doing? No, I, so I don't have more to say. I, the, the, I didn't have to say last time. The, the, the Patreon version is the one with all the mother-in-law jokes in it. Uh, so <laughs> that, Actually, that... I, went, I was going to say, I went to that Les Dawson show at the Edinburgh Festival last year. And this is that that podcast was was better than the Les Dawson show at the festival, <laughs> and I paid about three quid for that ticket as well. And, and I can't play the piano either, so it's it's all coming together lovely. But I, I have I've got I've got nothing at all to contribute to another podcast this week. Nothing, I, 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 unless unless we're going to go back over everything we got wrong on Sunday, which was not insignificant, and then try and kid on about actually right anyway, even though we're. Comp- you know, we're not going to get a dirty goalkeeper. Well, I mean, that clearly is. You know, that type of thing. What well, you if you're going to talk mince and you've got nothing fresh to add, it will be the same as every podcast you've ever been on. Boom, boom. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's here all week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Proud of you. That's lovely. <laughs> well, actually, principally, I uh, I was really only going to be Lawrence until you sent me those begging WhatsApp messages to say, but I love Lawrence. I, he's great to be on with. Can I be on with Lawrence, please? And I thought, okay, I better let him, let him and on. Then, and then hugely disappointed to discover you were going to be on as well. But okay. <laughs> right, right, very good. So listen, tell us tell us about your buses tweet. That was interesting. I, I was signing lots of players. You've got everybody <laughs> on, on the edge of their seats for that. So this is this is a cryptic, but okay, go for it. Who is this? So this is the problem with Twitter. As I said in the last podcast, I treat Twitter as like a WhatsApp group principle. So I'm sticking on, you know, like buses. You wait for ages, and then two come along at once. So like buses, wait for ages, and there's two podcasts in in a week. Although you know, I might I might wait a day to put this up so that it's not right side by side. And yeah, uh, because people are completely obsessed with signings. Then all that seems to have happened is people messaging about that must be two cent and a half for signing. <laughs> well, if we are, I'm going to pretend. So if, if before this podcast goes up, we sign two cent and a half, I'm going to pretend that's exactly what it was about. <laughs> as opposed to the fact that it's just about two podcasts. Aren't we signing uh, Carl Lagerfeld's uh, nephew uh, from Sweden, the Swedish boy? What's his name again? Gustav. Uh, I um, you are like it. Aye, uh, so he looks pretty decent, actually. Classic Celtic da podcast, straight away. Mispronouncing the guy before we've even seen well, him. That's well, quality. Yeah, but anyway, I'm looking it up. I, I, can, I couldn't find it before I, I mentioned him. Anyway, well, there's one. Anyway, I'm glad to be here. You can ask me about the game at the weekend, Harry. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you two things, Lawrence, because uh, Eddie and I were enthusiastic, uh, immediately grasped the... Um, the, jumped back on board the Brendan bus 
Uh, yeah. and, I know, I, I, and I'm not so sure that you are as enthusiastic as us. So it'd be useful to get the opinion of someone who who maybe has more reservations than we've got. So what was your thoughts about Ange leaving and Brendan coming? Well, I, um, I thought you would see the opinions of someone who knows a bit more than you guys about football. Um, the uh, the game, I thought it was... Ugh, I remember at the time, we just do not... Oh, this is dire. I mean, it, w- it wasn't dire, but it wasn't... I didn't think it was very great. I didn't... Uh, it looked like last year's team playing in slow motion, to be honest. That was my first thought. It didn't look... Uh, it looked like a team that, <laughs> with a new manager and a new plan and were kind of stuck between the two things. I didn't really see any obvious, obvious patterns of play. I didn't see any obvious... I mean, Ange, I, I'm, I'm still mad at Ange, right? I, I mean, I, did you see stuff today about Tottenham? I was, there's nowhere else I'd rather be and the greatest club in the world. And I was just like, oh, give me up. Give me a break. I, I, didn't, oh, I, I didn't see that. I mean, word for word. I know that Kane is is leaving and staying. Actually, I uh, I, I picked up a bit of uh, yeah I, yeah. I got not because I'm a Celtic guy. I'm obviously in the know. I, I don't <laughs> think Ange was very much for Kane all along. One, not his type of striker, and more importantly, Ange is all about the group. Spurs is all about Harry Kane, and that, that will not. You know, so somebody's mentioned that to me quite quite a few weeks ago, and it's no surprise to me that you know what's developing. Although, I mean, maybe I mean Kane, you know, probably doesn't want to go. Um, so we'll see. That'll be interesting, though. But here's my prediction: If Kane, this is a Celtic pocket. Why are we talking about Spurs? If, uh, but if Kane stays, watch out. There'll be some kind of blow up between Ange and Kane before before the end of the year, March. I mean, something will happen between those two if Kane stays. Uh, anyway, back to the game on Saturday. Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously we won, but I thought Ross County good performance from them. We didn't really know how to cope. It didn't look like we knew how to cope with them um, for the first certainly twenty thirty minutes. I'm not seeing anything original there, but t- t- you know, a few players didn't look up to it. You know, I was watching this and I'm thinking, well, Rogers won't. You know, I, I know Turnbull got a lot of praise, two goals and all that, but you know, same problems exist. You know, can he run? Not very athletic. Um, you know, Andy Anthony Ralston looks... He's gone back to the the Brendan era one, Anthony Ralston, by the looks of it. Uh, Greg Taylor looks sort, sort of out of sorts. Um, we talked about it before we come on. It'll be interesting to see where the team is in a month's time. Um, but we'll take it. Three points. Uh, it's brilliant, actually. We uh, I was driving, uh, coming up, got the boat from Belfast over to Cairn Ryan, I would happen to be driving past Kilmarnock about 15 minutes after the game finished at Rugby Park. It was absolutely brilliant driving up the M77 with all these vans full of just, oh, fantastic. And so that was a happy end to a slightly, it was a fine, you know, good start to the season, but that really put the tin, that, that made me feel a lot better about the day. There you go. But, but what, um, any positives you saw coming out of the game? Oh, I sorry, I shouldn't have said Ach, yeah. Of course. I mean Kyogo looks magnificent. I think you know, Brendan's trying to get him to play in a in a different way. Um you know, uh, not you know, maybe kind of dropping back a little bit and becoming a more kind of complete player or sort of trying to kind of link up a bit more. Um and he seems to be, you know, very enthusiastically trying to do that. I mean, great goal, still got the finishing. If he can add that little bit extra to his game, what a player we've got in that. I cannot believe actually, I would guess it's his age, was he 28, 29, 28? I cannot believe that people haven't come in for, it, for him. You know, and that, that's the one thing talking about Harry Kane. If Kane leaves Spurs, that would be my one fear. Uh, good, the good news is that we've signed him on a five-year deal. It would take an absolute king's ransom uh, to get him away. And even then, I'm not sure um, Celtic would sell him to, to Ange Postacoglu right now. I'm given to believe that um, you know, things aren't you know quite rosy in that particular garden <laughs> for the time being. Um, but uh, yeah, that was you know fantastic. Uh, Maeda doesn't seem to be much better at controlling ball than he ever was, but that's okay. Um, other positives, I like the new the new centre half looks good. It's a good. He's obviously been he's obviously not a Brendan signing, but obviously Brendan approved. He looked pr- pretty decent actually. He might be an upgrade on Starfield maybe. Um, 
and he fits that really good age profile. That's the one thing I would say in the, uh, the signings so far. I know we all want more signings, but I really like the age profile of the signings. They're all, you know, 20, 21, 22. We're not, I mean, I saw us like with some, I don't know who it was, we were linked with some centre forward from West Ham at the age who's 29 years old or something. Go, what? Uh, hopefully those days are over. Those days are gone. Um, so, yeah, a good, a good bit to be positive about. I'm sure Brendan will get, uh, get it a bit more knocked into shape this week. Players, will, you know, specifically likes of Greg, Greg Taylor will maybe know more what's required of them. Uh, going up to Aberdeen, that's we've done pretty well there in recent recent years. Uh, looking forward to the weekend. Um, uh, yeah, so there you go. I mean, good start. Uh, three points ahead already. I mean, that's uh, what's to complain about that. Eddie, we we did the last podcast closer to the game. Now that we've gone away from it, have you got any more thoughts about the positives of of, of the game on Sunday, on the Saturday rather? Obviously, getting to this age, the further away from the game we go, the harder it is to remember. <laughs> um, it was Kamal that we played, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> I, I, actually, probably maybe the opposite. I don't know. Um, I thought as, as we move further away from the game, the less confident I am that, that Turnbull will be a long-term player with the squad. I thought he did well there, but... Uh, I think that the, the initial burst of this guy's coming to score two goals, maybe this could be a season. I don't think it's going to be a season. Um, so there's that. In terms of positives, yeah, I like the way the centre-half lined up. The fact that we're, we're in for another centre-half so soon is obviously to replace Starfield. But, uh, By the way, hang on, let me just... That's a weird one, isn't it? Why is he going to kill the view? I saw something on Twitter, something really good on Twitter pointing out that He's gone there to be closer to his girlfriend. That's fine. But um, it's four hours, four or five hours drive down to Lisbon from where he is. He could get from Glasgow to Lisbon in seven hours, all in. So he's, all kind of... he's gone there to be closer to his girlfriend and stuff. Do you know, I think there's, there's, two, there's two things to that. Right? One, if he has gone, then fair enough. He, he's, that's that's a, I don't think I'd want somebody at a club who is more interested in playing for Celtic than producing a happy family environment for themselves. Or, you know, this idea of, what is he doing, his bird, what is he doing following his bird for? I know. <laughs> we don't do that. Do you know what I mean? So let's not get there. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah I, got, I got a hard time for that. The other thing is, he's gone to the Spanish league. Yeah, he's yeah, went for the good. Scottish league to the Spanish league. Yeah, oh, I, I, I'm genuinely confused by that. Yeah, no, you're, that's a fair point. I equally, saw. equally, they could stay... Just very simplistically, they could stay two miles north of uh, of Lisbon, which would be two miles south of Vigo. You know, so there is an element of they could stay in a bit where it's it's only a two hour commute for him up and a two hour commute for her down, and that's not much more than some players stay in Edinburgh and come across to Glasgow. And right, so my concern with that is that you have obviously looked into places to stay halfway between, which is is I, tantamount to stalking, really. I was, I was, I had them, I had Google Maps out before we started this podcast. I was looking at, it, trying to work it out. It's, it just it's, seems like, ah, uh, you know what? Love conquers all. Give him that, right? And he's been a pretty decent servant. Uh, and um, and she had to move, you know, because I mean, I think they take women's football a bit more seriously in in uh, in Spain. Obviously, they do because I think there's, I mean, I'm not sure the level of salaries and. Um, in women's football in Scotland, but I think, but I'm led to believe it's a pittance. So good for her. Love conquers all. It just seems a you know massive upheaval for a couple of hours. That, but, I mean, but it's, it's not. But I go back to my point. He's, he's joined the Spanish league side. You know, I, it was I, always but, clear he was going this summer, right? So we didn't we didn't bring a Japanese centre half in just just for Ange, right? We brought him in because we need a left sided uh, left sided centre half. Because Starfield was always going to be the player who was getting lined up to be sold this summer because of his age, because of how long he had to go in his contract. Um, there, there was, Two years. Was, Two was, years. Yeah, well, now's the time to sell him. You know, he's, he's the most expendable out of the players that we thought was available. We didn't think Jota would go, but he's the most expendable player we thought, right, he's the next one that we're going to move on. Um, and he, he's got the choice of going to England or going to Spain. And he's went to Spain. It's, it, it's, it's not complicated. People are trying to create a, a well, what's he like going going back down there for his butt? If if he's if he's gone because he wants because his his girlfriend's moved on, then okay, fair enough. But I would think about it more logically in that he's going to play in the Spanish league. 
and he's going to test but, himself there. There's, there's absolutely no surprise in that. Um, will it be a loss? Aye, because he's formed a good partnership with Cameron Kakara Vickers, and a lot of people are talking about how we've no lost games um, with those two playing together. But is he is he a fantastic centre half? No, he's not a fantastic centre half. He's eminently replaceable. We just need to do it right. But he's he's not a player that he's he's no he's not going to turn into a a, a Van Dyke in in the, in the next eighteen months. You know no. he's going to he's, he's a good solid player. He has a limited impact upon the international setup. He's no he's no anybody that's absolutely ripping up trees and setting the hair on fire. You know it's it's um, he's a good player. He's formed a good partnership. He was not an outstanding player when we brought him in, and it took a long time for the, the fans to accept him. And the reason it took a long time for the fans to accept him was because he kept making mistakes. And he settled into the, the job in the, in, the, in the club. And somebody else will come in and do that as well. I I, I I don't see the... I think it's just tying into that current narrative of people wanting to complain about this transfer window being pure crap, by the way, man. Right? I, well, he it, 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 it was always going to go, and he's gone, and the best I loved him. Right. Well, that, that fair enough. Uh, yeah, Um He's not well. He's, he had a chance to play Champions League football, so I mean, I, I guess that doesn't mean much to him. The one other thing I would want to bring up about this, Harry, is what we're we getting for him. Undisclosed, what reported to be five million. If the club aren't saying it's usually less when you think, you know, this is an idea. I was just looking this up here. I, I mean, I don't, I don't follow the English Championship very. A guy called Alex Scott is leaving Bristol City to join Bournemouth for twenty-five million. You know, we're we're selling a, you know, he's not a, an international regular, but he has been. He just played for Sweden occasionally. Uh, we're selling him for four or five billion cent a half, proven cent a half, who's played pretty well. He's got two years left in his contract. What? Why we? Why we? Why do we sell a player so cheap? I don't. I don't get it. I, I read a, a really interesting thing from a guy who works with one of the Dutch clubs, and I can't remember what one. They don't get obsessed with comparing somebody's sale value with somebody else's sale value, what they look at is the replacement cost of a player. And so his point was, if you shop in, like, so we shop, we have, we've been shopping lately in Japan where we can get a Kyogo for a couple of million quid, million, two million quid, um, that the same quality of player, if we, shop, if we bought the same quality of player from France, would cost us nine million quid, Right. And so two comparable players with the same data, same ability, the league we shop in, he's two, and the league that somebody else shops in, he's nine. So the, the guy's point was the way that this club look at it is, what's the replacement cost? So if you are selling to a bigger league, one of the big five leagues, where they spend more money and their average spend on a certain age of player with a certain profile is higher, so you know, very simplistically, we're shopping in Poland and buy a cent and a half or whatever it is, three and a half million quid. Mm-hmm. And he's maybe got the same data, same stats as Starfelt, but we've sold him to have top for a big five league at five million quid. This guy's argument is the way that his club look at it is they're 1.5 million pounds up in the deal because the replacement cost value. So the minute that you can sell a player at, the, at higher than your replacement cost value, you're up in the transaction. That was the way that they look at it. So if you're continually shopping in a cheaper league and then somebody's buying from you, and so you can imagine the Dutch league being, you know, that tier between a cheap league, you know, the Swedish league, the Dutch league, and the Spanish league are at three different tiers. So if you're a, 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 a Dutch scout, that yep. makes sense, that profile. So if you put it that way, if we think the Polish guy is of the same standard already as Starfelt, but is younger, then what you're looking at is uh, we're, we're up massively in this transaction because we've got a guy at 3.5 where that's the equivalent of if you were to go and buy a Starfelt type of player from Spain, you'd be spending 6 million. So therefore we're 2.5 million up in the deal already is the way to look at it. Well, you lost me at hello. I just don't <laughs> think we're selling... We're still selling our players too cheaply, but I, again, I guess other other clubs in other markets look at Scotland and just say no. You know, they just say, "Well, no, well, okay." I guess that's as much as we could get. I guess Celta Vigo would have just gone somewhere else because I guess centre halves. The Jota thing sorry, that means that argument, though, does it not? Yeah, but the Jota thing that was a well, you know, the, 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 the story's kicking around that he's going to get loaned out. 
I mean, that mm-hmm. was a what's a that's a white elephant. That so that was he, that just walked in off the street. I mean, that was bonkers. I bet the Celtic couldn't. I mean, I've no idea, but I bet he couldn't believe it. You're the you right. Know, he was a, white, are you sure you've got white elephant in the right context? There, sorry, that, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's a, a white. What's the word? I don't know. Unicorn. So, uh, oh, anyway, that's a whatever it is, right? Sorry, no, it's not a white elephant. Sorry, um, but yeah, that's. Uh, I can't wait to read that Shergar book. I tell you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the uh, so, uh, the. Uh, yeah, that was you know that that will never happen again. That was so lucky, so lucky. But the the um, other thing you got to look at it is Starfield, as you say, he's what twenty six years of age, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty eight. So a twenty eight year old Swedish guy, yeah. who has kicked around clubs. That's the biggest reason because teams are looking, saying, "How's yep. he at twenty eight? How's he not played for a top six league already?" Right, I, I mean the Alex Scott comparison. It, 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 I mean, it's not not in any way apt. I mean, they're completely different players, different age profiles. Uh, Scott's clearly a really good player, and what little I know about him. But it's Bristol City or Bristol Rovers, whatever it is. You know, we're Celtic, but yet we're you know clubs. You know, won't budge, won't budge. But you got to remember the, the 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 crazy cosseted attitude in English football about. You know, he, he knows the English game, so so they know what they're getting. They know they're guaranteed because he's played in English football, so they know they're guaranteed to get six out of ten every week out of him. Yeah, it, it's also to tie into that. There's conversations taking place just now. We're talking about Harry Kane earlier, and there's conversations online where guys like uh, Jamie Carragher and stuff are saying, you know, does he really want to go abroad? Aye, it's Bayern Munich, but you know, there's no competition. Aye, yeah. he might win a trophy. But yeah. you know, he could end up the top scorer in the English Premiership, and you think, wait a minute, it, he needs to score something like almost two hundred goals to beat Jimmy Greaves' record in England, you know. But but it's arc; it's only Jimmy. It doesn't really count. They have well, a conceit. There's a, there's a myopic view of how important the English football is that, that dominates. It, so that's why mediocre talents like you're describing ones get picked up for millions of pounds because they must but, be good playing in England. Well, Scott's. I'm not. I'm not saying Scott's a mediocre talent. I, I saw somebody talking about this tonight. I mean, it's, it's like Bayern Munich or Duisburg or something like that. Right. It's just incredible. I know. He's one know. of the storied clubs of Europe. I've reduced. I mean, where's, this where's is the, how. Where's the challenge? They're so, probably going to win that league anyway. And you're thinking, have you looked at Man City? I was <laughs> just going to say, COVID season. Man City would be going for. A, 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 you know, if Man City had won that league, they'd be going for seven in a row this year in England. That's incredible when you think about it in that context. COVID season knocks everything out. They won two before COVID. They've won three after COVID. That league is exactly the same as every other major league in, the, in, in Europe where there's one team dominating. But no, they, they don't They don't see it that way because it's England. It's the best product ever. There's, there's adverts all over the the, notice, uh, the, the billboards in, in Glasgow saying the greatest show on earth. And every once in a while, some of the people they're putting up as part of the greatest show on earth, you think, ah, that's false advertising. That's absolutely false advertising. Yeah. But hey, it's what Sky does. Well, I, I, and you have to give it to the, the prim- I mean, just brilliant marketing. Brilliant marketing from day one. I mean, now completely uh, just destroying. See the other corners of the world. You don't see the TV deals in Africa for indigenous leaks. They're, they're, it's, it's pennies now because the TV companies in these far flung corners of the world are spending all the whatever money they've got on the English Premier League, the rights to the English Premier League. So their, their local leagues are just getting thrown buttons. That's how powerful the brand is. Sorry, on you go. You're talking. Well, I was going to say, I get up on a Saturday morning and there's, there it is. Uh, NBC paid, I think it's $2 billion for the rights for three or four years for the English Premier League. And they've got about eight channels and there it is. It's on every single NBC channel. It's on the Sci-Fi Channel. You can watch the English Premier League on the Sci-Fi Channel. You can watch the English Premier League on CNBC, the Business Channel. It's it's just it's very interesting, though. No, challenge, though? That's no that's zero cool. chance. Nah, zero you know, chance. You, you, you've obviously plugged into the love. I don't really know what the love golf conversation was all about, but you know, do, what do you think of the influence that Saudi money could have on the game? If 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 what what they've done in golf is translated across. Well, they've made very little impact in golf. I mean, do they have the patience to? I mean, to they'll never rival the uh, they'll never rival the English Premier League. It doesn't have the history and the the names and the clubs and the 
I mean, the, the, the heritage does count. See, in terms of branding, the heritage, the heritage does count for quite a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're, you're not going to challenge that. But here's something else, actually. This is a really interesting conversation. Um, the Kuwaiti Sovereign Wealth Fund is bigger than the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund. And the Kuwaitis are now dipping in their, dipping their toes into football. That's that's where they want to go. They've seen it. Uh, other nations out there doing it. And they're, they're going next. They, they, their Sovereign Wealth Fund's been around a lot longer. And it's a lot, it's a lot wealthier than the Saudis. Um, so watch out for that. Is that um, a PSG I, I think you, no, that's Qatar. Is it um, Kuwait have Kuwait have, uh, to my knowledge, I mean, not that I've got great knowledge on the subject, but I don't think they've yet they've yet to really dip their toe in seriously into the into the into the world of football. They don't need to um, do quite so much sports washing as the Saudis need to do. They don't they don't uh, chop up that's right. <laughs> Well, there is that. The uh, I tell you what might challenge the English Premier League in the longer term. Uh, in the States would be the MLS. That's ramping up. This messy thing is actually quite quite big news. You know, uh, there remains to be seen how how long he hangs around. But uh, that's uh, that really is making a dent. I mean, I think football, soccer would be, whoever would be in the pecking order, six or seven. Uh, it's de- you know, the messy thing is really elevating that. Um, but, but again... We've, how many times have we seen American football you know, or soccer coming in America? And it's going to be the next big thing, and it's never really taken off. But this is certainly the most since the uh, the New York Cosmos and all that crap back in the nineteen seventies. This is about as high profile as football has been in the states. Um, so that would that might challenge the English Premier League, but they're so you know they're so all encompassing, so powerful. The brand is. I say I was walking through the streets of London today and I saw Lee Dixon. Walking down the street, Lee Dixon is 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 the main analyst on the NBC the commentary. He's the main in game analyst. Mm-hmm. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, but it really is it's a, it's a juggernaut over there. It's just incredible. You know, your people tune it in for God knows what they'll make of Luton Town in the Premier League this year. I mean, that's just you know, look at the SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, where the uh, who plays down there? I can't even fucking remember. The Chargers are one of those fuckers. I'm um, sorry for your, um, uh, but this modern, this best football stadium or best sports stadium in the world, and they're going to be NBC are going to be pushing this Luton Town thing. It's just bonkers when you think about it. That, but that's the power of the brand. Yeah, but that's, then that's, that's sorry, all, but that's also the reason why at some point, you know, I, I look at the Saudi money, and you know, as Eddie was was talking about, you know, much more about the live golf thing. Than me, obviously, I'm into boxing as well, and they are doing boxing as part of their sports washing stuff. And I just look at it that they'll have probably learned lessons from the whole live golf thing, and and, and particularly, I always go back to the Apple documentary on the European Super League, and uh, the key English clubs that are foreign, that are, that are American owned in particular, they were all set for it. They were going for it. It was actually Boris Johnson's intervention. Yeah, that stopped it, but they were right up for it. And you watch that documentary, and you think the problem is that that football's eating itself at the very elite level, and that they need more money to pay the players, and then they pay the players more money, so they need more money. That European Super League principle—they're just going to keep going. My gut feel is watching that you're just going to keep doing this until you get the model right that's sufficiently acceptable that it happens. And then with the Saudis coming in. I'm thinking, you're not chucking this money at it. I know you want to do the sports washing, but surely the simpler thing is just to go out and buy, you've bought Newcastle, go and buy some others, you know, funnel it a different way. So I then look at it and go, right, so are we eventually going to see that the European Super League for the elite clubs across Europe replaces domestic leagues and then a world league replaces the Champions League in terms of you then have the Saudi teams and a couple of South American and and North American and MLS, and suddenly you've got that sort of critical mass. And then you look at it and you go, well, Saudis aren't going to wait around for 10 years for that to work. The amount of money they're pumping in and the age of the players that they're doing it with, they would want that to happen in the next two or three. I saw a very very interesting article today about... um about the Saudi uh, MBS's relationship with uh, with the FIFA chief exec, is it Inf- I don't know how to pronounce his name, Infantino. Infantino, his name yeah, is. yeah. Uh, they're very, very tight, and and the, the you know the significance of that personal relationship 
uh, in the context of this coming FIFA World Club thing, 2020, when it's relaunching as yeah. a kind of rival to the Champions League. I think the Saudis see that as their way in. You, you know, you, you are right. What the Saudis have discovered with Live Golf is they, they never really wanted a golf league. They, they don't know how to run golf tournaments. They don't know how to run a golf tournament. They're no interest in running golf tours, right? They just wanted to buy a chunk of the PGA Tour, and it looks like that that's what they'll get. Now, they've been able to take over boxing because boxing is relatively small. Mm-hmm. You know, it's pretty kind of contained. Golf a bit trickier, but they're kind of getting a grasp of it now. But they don't want their own league. They want they want just to own a chunk of the PGA Tour, and they'll do it from there. Can you imagine trying to get a, a grapple global football? I mean, that that is a highly complex, multi-decade task. So they, what they'll they'll try and find find a workaround in terms of football. The Saudis will, and I think they'll do that through this FIFA club championship thing, which I think starts in 25, is it? I think it's 25. Um, so that's that's where they'll be. But what my, uh, my other point is watch out for the Kuwait. Celtic should get their – we should be uh, – I mean, I can't imagine the Kuwait sovereign. Can you imagine the Kuwait Kuwaitis <laughs> showing up at, at – Celt- it's not – I don't think that's going to happen, but w- watch out for them. It's, sitting, uh, sitting in the stands at Dingwall watching Celtic away to Ross County. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? The, that is amazing, though no, – uh, just it is getting back to this whole thing. What what is the only thing that unites the world at any one time? Where we all sit down and 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 partake of the same experience. It's live sport. That is it. Nothing. Everything else is on demand. Everything. Um, it's live sport. Uh, football, golf. It's it's amazing. Or oh, to be fifteen and as talented as you were as a goalkeeper, Harry, when you were fifteen, <laughs> the world's your lobster. Not, not to mention holidays again, Eddie. You didn't listen yet to, to, to last the last one. I was in Florida this summer. You should have said. <laughs> but you're right. There was billboards everywhere for the MLS new season starting. I mean, everywhere. Wait, wait, who is who is that football in, in America launch? Is it is it? Uh, in your naivety, we still think they're no interested. Is it is it really taking hold, or is it still? Where would you place it in terms of the sports in America that have? Uh, 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 I've captured the nation's attention. Is it at the bottom? Oh, except, no. It's, what is it? There's always these lists. I mean, obviously, NFL, uh, NBA, uh, baseball. Then you get into ho- hockey, probably. But I tell you what, the football is a bit. But the football's always been there. In the 70s, the football was going to take over America. And, and it kind of d- disappeared, as I was saying earlier. This is about as high profile. The, the Messi's arrival is about as high profile as it's been for a very long time. They're obviously just trying to build it up for the World Cup 2026. Mm-hmm. But I, I, again, I just don't think... You know the things with America, the thing about Americans, right? They, says he was just generalising about 330 million people. Is, <laughs> they're, they're, Celtic they're, Dad, they're, the Gammon podcast. I'll tell you oh, one I, thing about all Americans. And then after right, that, I'll we'll t- move on to the English. <laughs> right, we've done the English. We've done the QAs. <laughs> we're on to the, the Yanks. No, seriously though. Their their national team is pish, right? There, there's nothing. There's no. There, there's nothing to embrace. The national team is garbage, and the point. I mean, not to get too deep in the woods. And the national team will never be any good because the development structure in America. If you want to play soccer in America, it's pay to play. So it's only it's the kids of the talent pool is restricted to those kids from families who can afford the pay to play model. Like now, played our, our lad played a decent level of competitive soccer. It was costing us six grand a year for twelve-year-old kids, thirteen-year-old kids running around. You know that's so. You think, that, 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 see that class on. thing. You know, I, I, I've always always thought the American game it, it, it was built around a, a different class for what we're, we're prov- totally used to. Into, but don't you think that class thing is changing in the game across the globe? Don't you think that it's it's, it's much more a, a middle class? No, not a much more no. middle class, but it's becoming more. I, I, I no. think there's something in that in terms of you know kids getting driven to games and getting proper coaching and stuff. The the, the days of a kid who can kick a ball up a back close, getting spotted by a by a club and suddenly coming into the system is increasingly rare. Don't you but, think that, that you know? See if you kind of get your kid. Um, if your kid signs for for Air United, you need to get your kid to Ross County yourself. To for them to play in that under fourteen game or whatever it is, 
working class folks don't, can't do that the same way. So, so inevitably, the, you're, the, but the, you're, the, there's you're, complexities there. You're talking about us. You're talking about our country, and, and we're, I'm talking about America. These, you know, I look at these American kids coming through. They play college or whatever. They're playing for Stanford. or you know national champions. They're, they're turn pro, and they're playing against guys off the street from Mexico. They're off the street. These guys are actually playing for something. You know, they're playing to get the families. You know, the extended family off the streets. You, know, these guys from from Uruguay and. Chile and Argentina. I mean, so, I mean, the market, the football market now is global. So if you're coming out, if you're playing a good player in Uruguay, Mark Cooper will see you and you'll end up somewhere. But uh, so these kids, these kind of coddled middle class kids from the States whose families could afford to put them through all this, co- you know, this expensive system have got no chance because well, they don't have that. For example. Well, well what's boy. happened to him? Well, what's happened to him? Again, mm-hmm. look what happened to him in the uh, with the World Cup. His family, it was kind of that whole snowplow family thing. Oh, you know, ratting out the coach because the parents are ratting out the coach because the son wasn't getting a game. That's, didn't he get a nice seat in the plane? Well, it's just incredible. You know, that's mm-hmm. the kind of stuff. You can you imagine that happening to the Uruguay national team? You know, all these guys are off the street. They're all fighting for something. You know, they've got talent, but they've got that drive. You know, you know, again, you apply that to any professional athlete. Look at Tiger. You know, black guy from South, Southern California and a white man sport. You don't think Tiger was out there just to shove it right up to these people? Of course he was. Years and years of racism and, and you know, being looked down upon. I once did a story about Tiger at his local golf club. Tiger won... Ty was 18 or 19 years old, won the US Amateur Championship, a storied trophy. Every great name in the history of golf is on it. Tiger takes that trophy to the local club and says, "When well, he's been gone since he was a kid. Do you want to display the US uh, Amateur Trophy in the club? No, no thanks. You know, so a guy like that just gets, you know, plays with a chip in his shoulder, always. And, this, you know, and it's this- the same, you know, that's a problem with with, the, with 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 what's going on in the states, and partly the problem that's going on in Scotland as well. I the mean, you're it's terrified. Achieve, the desire to achieve so, has to come through a genuine hunger. Hunger, and and and, and that hunger comes from deprivation, or, or or is that is that something that can be or, trained? It can be taught. And it players, it can be taught. It can. Or, well, know, I, see, I, see I think life's too comfortable. Do you strive as much as you need to in sport? Well, of course not. But but. I mean, it can be taught. But you, you look at Michael Jordan's a brilliant example. I mean, if you look at the last dance, I mean, Michael Jordan, I mean, Michael, famously, Michael Jordan's speech at the Hall of Fame when he was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame was that he was settling scores, still settling scores. A guy that who had proved everything that was needed to be proved, who had, he was making $300 million a year off his shoes. I mean, had everything and he was still there, still bitter still got a chip in his shoulder about X, Y, and Z. And he played, he always played, you know, he always had to find somebody to pr- to prove a point to. And I think you can teach that. I, I say that to our kid um, all the time. You know, find somebody. Find somebody you want to rub their noses in it. And I think you can teach it that way, I think. But it's mm-hmm. harder and harder now. And I, I, I'm, I look at, by the way, bringing it back to Celtic, I look at our youth system, I'm terrified. Who have we got coming through? Who have we produced? I mean, just, I mean, nobody. There's nobody. I mean, who was the kid? Was it Vata? I saw him advertising some Irish thing the other day. He seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. It's been a some... the season, to be fair. I know that. But he's only got a year ago in his contract. He's moved the agent to, to Angie's old agency, which is a concern. You know, we've lost dope. Of course it is. And I saw it was a bit... Ben Summers, I think he's off on loan to Dunfermline. No, that's, you know. I don't know if that's been confirmed, but that was the talk last night. That, that somebody so, said that and, and McPherson off on loan to Queen's Park. I, I mean, I think that's a decent move. I think Queen's Park looks as if they're quite a, a forward-thinking club the way they're going just now. I mean, I, I had pals face outside that obviously went to see Queen's Park lot, lots of times and stuff, and went to see them a few times. Uh, the move to professionalism, I don't know, lost a wee bit of the magic for me, but it's easy for me to say. 
Um, because I don't support them, but you know they're, they're now getting at the first division. But they seem as if they've got a they've got a vision of what they want to do, and maybe yeah, that's the right type of club to move a kid. No, no offense to Queens Park, right? But what what are what's a, a a promising player from Celtic going to learn playing in the first division? I mean, I, I actually what's a promising player going to learn playing in that that uh, that Celtic B team? Ask Andy. Why, why are we wasting Ask Andy time Robertson. He went to Queens Park. And they were a division, but at least two divisions. That's another white. That's another white elephant. That's a joke. I, I need to. I need to. <laughs> I can't remember what the phrase but, I'm looking for. But the but the problem the problem is we where, where do our players go, and that's why we are so obsessed with the principle well, of having a second club. That Scottish yeah. football is the barrier to us having a second team playing anywhere because Scottish football is. We want to be able to own or have a second team, and the problem with Scottish football is their concern is that if we're allowed to own a second team, then then the rules have to change to the extent that then someone as big as my, as Partick Thistle or Dundee United to become the second team of a big club somewhere across Europe because it's right on England's doorstep. And so it'd be really useful to have a second team there. And so the but barrier, to, the barrier to us having a second team is is the fear that the, the rest of Scottish football become second teams for, for other people. But our... our... Our youth system should be so good that when we send kids out on loan, they should go to the Ross counties of this world. They should go to maybe maybe the odd ones should go to Aberdeen. Not all of them, but some of them should go to Aberdeen. They should go to Dundee. They should go to St. Mern. And and you can say no disrespect to these clubs, but clearly it's disrespectful to these clubs, right? Because what I'm basically saying is that the quality that those teams should have should be of a lesser standard than our youths coming through if they're good enough. We shouldn't be really to defeat my own argument previously, going to a Queen's Park or going to a Dunfermline, if they're that good, they should be able to play first-team football at the age of 19, the way some of these teams, the way David Turnbull was doing at Motherwell, for example. And if we're not producing yeah. kids that are good enough to play first-team football in the Premier League, then, then we need to go back and look at what we're doing. Or else, but, but, we need to do a Brentford and chuck it. But the challenge, the challenge is always a guy who is playing with other 15 and 16 year olds and 16 and 17 year olds and 17 and 18 year olds suddenly playing with real grown up physical men is a leap. And, and it's bridging that gap because we're not playing them because as you talked about in the podcast, we've only signed five players so far this transfer window and it's been shite. You know, the mentality of our fans that we need to be buying 10 players a summer and they're all 50 million pound players principle. How can you ever then feed a young player into that system? It's a it's a real difficult one. It's a, yeah, we are. I mean, Salzburg have got that uh, leafering club, and the, you know the number of they buy players you know from all sorts of markets. They just put send put the these young kids, sixteen, seventeen year olds, playing for them for a couple of years, bring them into the Salzburg first team, and sell them on at twenty. Um, you know, there's obviously a, a really good scouting network there to you because know, you've got to spot that talent, but. We, you know, very early, uh, but they've got a place to deposit that talent. Maybe that you know, washing club that we've we've joined up with is, is the opportunity for yeah. that. You know, we're sending the goalkeeper there. You know, and, okay, it's the second division in Austria, but maybe it's a start. At the yep. very least, it'll help them grow as human beings by by living in a different country. You know, and, and be yeah, exposed but, to a different culture. But yeah, but uh, you're dead right. Why can't we do that in Scotland? You know, we have to go to Austria. It's just, I mean. I, if I had the opportunity of keeping my boy going to Dunfermline or going to Austria for a year, I, I think I might take the Austria option or I might suggest to him that the Austria option may be better for his development as a rounded individual. You know, he might not make yeah. it as a footballer, but... Yeah, I th- I think a- but see, it's a, it's the club, you know, the thing about Salzburg and Liefering is that, that, that you know, these players are right on their doorstep. So the the Salzburg coaches and, you know, they can keep an eye on them. You know, they can bring them in for, you know, physical development or medical stuff. You know, we're sending kids to a different country. You know, you know we can't, it's hard to keep an eye on them. We can't have somebody based in Austria the whole time. You know, and forget, you know, we can't keep an eye on their, you know, their diet or their, you know, their health. It's, I mean, it's just, I'm just having a rant about Scotland. You know, yeah, but don't, don't forget the attitude in Scottish football. Uh, Hibs have played a Swiss team oh. today. And, and as we know, they're technically superior to us. You know, that, that sort of gen, generalisation that um, we don't even need to try 
you know, we don't uh, the, the other clubs in Scotland accept that principle so that's the concept of well we don't even need to try and look and say why are they technically superior what do we need to do to transform it and you're right you're talking about our youngsters but then gets back to something that Eddie that you and I touched on last week who are the players coming through anywhere in Scottish football for any club that uh, an indigenous player that we would want to sign at the moment, when was the last time we saw a player playing for another club in Scotland that we wanted to sign? At the moment, well, there was a right, uh, sorry, Lee Miller's, sorry. Lee Miller's boy at Motherwell, we're interested in. Um, I like to say Lennon Miller, but I'm not convinced I've got that right. Um, we're interested in him. Uh, Ryan Strain, who's probably not a youth player, and he's, he's Australian, so I'm not sure that counts. We wanted to sign the boy from St Mun, who came from a Ranger supporting background, and and remember we made a bid for him last year. I can't remember the guy's name, but you know that there was there was a wee cohort of youth players that we, we wanted to get in maybe about a year ago, and we want to get a guy Miller in this year um, to try and I would assume to try and give us that homegrown. We're aware that we, we're lacking in homegrown talent for for the group stages, but you know that that's that could become a problem in the near future. There's there's three or four, but to be perfectly honest. You don't know, and I don't know where, where the quality is in, in, in the UCL. All, all, I, all I know <laughs> is one of the reasons why Ange sent Stephen McManus and Dan O'Day to do the youth setup is because he thought it was not to standard. Um, and, and to be fair, I think the club are looking at what other things can they do. As far as I'm aware, that, that transformation of Battlefield is is progressing. I think you, you, I think it's now been it's, it's now been out to tender uh, spending. And, you know there was a lot of talk and, and mentioned about how much of it's real and how much do people really know. But there was a lot of talk about uh, to persuade Ange. We we were talking about the amount of money we're going to spend on infrastructure. Well, I believe the Barrafield thing of having a full size indoor pitch and a stadium that the B team and the women can play at, at Barrafield is progressing. You know, was it Celtic never move quickly? As was it they say, it's evolution, not revolution. But I do believe that it's about 10, 12 million quid that we're going to spend on Barrafield to at least try and give the the, the youth set up as best chance they can by having a an infrastructure system. But as far as I understand, the club believe the biggest barrier to us having a youth system is the inability to have a second team, a B team somewhere, either uh, playing playing not at Lowland League level, playing at a decent level, whether that's in Scotland being allowed to, to play right up to championship level or whether it's even overseas, I, I, I know that that's their biggest frustration and that's why Doak leaves, it's the boy who went to Bayern Munich leaves, it's the challenge because youngsters are sitting there well, and they're then approached actually, by other clubs who say, you get better first team opportunities because we can do this pathway But the whole Liam Morris, Morris and stuff leaving to go to Bayern Munich and obviously now back at Wigan you know, and, and the guy, the guy uh, Barry Hepburn, who's now back at, at, at Queen's Park, the, the Liam Morris one, uh, Morrison one, I'm, I am not convinced that we did enough to keep that guy wanting to... Uh, that's a that's a guy that wanted to play for Selic and probably still wants to play for Selic. Um, I'm not convinced we did enough. Um, I, I, I hear that when there was talking I'm going to Bayern Munich, that his family were told that somebody for high up in the club would come and meet with them and talk to them and encourage the boy to stay and they sat in waiting for somebody to come because a, a, a date was arranged and a time was arranged and they'd be bothered. You know, and if we really wanted to keep these players, and it's all second hand, as always, it's all rumour and talk and it could probably quite easily be shot down, but my understanding was that if we really wanted to keep Liam Morrison, we would have kept Liam Morrison because Liam Morrison would have stayed if he was shown any encouragement that he was wanted. And and I think he, he, I think his family felt badly let down in those circumstances that um, that, that what they thought was going to happen nobody bothered and they thought well listen that shows how you're how you're valued there's an opportunity to go to Germany develop grow as a grow as a person and go for it and that's why I did it. Here uh, enough of uh, hearsay and secondhand gossip from Eddie. Uh, here's some first hand. That's all I've got. That's all I've got. No right so. Talking about developing uh, young players, right, and giving them opportunities. So, 
the, I'm, the reason I'm over, I'm over in London this week. The wee man's down playing for Scotland. Scotland men golf, mm-hmm. men's golf. Couldn't believe it. Got a phone call. Yeah, you've been picked to play the home internationals. The home internationals is not quite the absolute, you know, for all the national team events, the home internationals isn't quite the very, very apex. But it's kind of well, not let's, bad. Let's, let's, let's not talk it down. I mean, and no, no. Out, of, out of everybody that plays golf in Scotland. Aye, no, no. has been called up yeah. Hi, you know, you're being, you're being modest. That's amazing. You know, right? But he, but here's my point, right? Um, um, the point you, you, to give people opportunity. So he goes out today. He played England yesterday. Uh, he whatever he, he actually beat a boy. Actually, he beat anyway. Playing Ireland today. Playing this morning in foursomes, and he and I caught. He get beat four and three. Right. So what does he? I mean, if you know what golf is, you know what I mean. It was. So I call him at lunchtime. I say, how'd it go? And he said, oh, oh we just got gubbed. You know, uh, the, but they were absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant watching these Irish boys. And then I, call, you know, I, I called him this afternoon. He got beat this afternoon. And I said, how'd it go? He said, oh, he didn't swear. But he said, oh, I played an absolute chopper. He beat me. I can't believe it. It was awful. It was awful. And the thing, you know, and I hated it because at least this morning, I got to see what it was all about. I got to see these two, my two fantastic Irish golfers, like guys who are really like they've all got beers. All the guys he's playing against, but, but so no matter what. And I was like, wow, you know, he kind of understands why he's there, what he's seeing, what the value of the experience is. So he got gubbed this morning, obviously disappointed, but he got to see what it's really, really like. Um, you know, so. You, 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 we need to give our football, our, our young lads, that kind of stuff. The footballers, that kind of experience. They're not saying, you know, you know, take ourselves, you know, sixteen, I'll say eighteen, right? So, I uh, played eighteen year olds in the first team, but but we've got to find places for them to play, like a serious place for them to play. No, this lowland league nonsense. I go and see Sterling Albion every time I'm home. I love the Beanos, right? But it's pish. The football is absolute pish, right? And if a Celtic, 18-year-old Celtic player was there, he'd be learning nothing other than how to run away from cloggers. That's it, right? So but I, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, can't believe that we're not allowed to own another team. We should be like, you know, but that's fine. Can't, why can't we own another team in Austria or France or something like that? And that would be a place where your kids... The football equivalent of now can go and play and see what it's like to play against half decent players, not top, top, top level players, but you know, decent players, proper. Well, now it's amateur golf, but proper internationalists, guys who will be playing in the pros in a year's time, who will be playing in the Walker Cup in in a month's time. Uh, just a brilliant ex- experience for a kid, and the kid understands what's happening, what he's experienced. And my goodness, that will help him so much as he moves ahead in his development. Because he'll go and play in the home internationals next year and he won't be scared and he'll know what he has to do to respond to when he's playing a brilliant, brilliant golfer, a couple of brilliant golfers from Ireland. And it's a shame that, you know, we're sitting, the three of us here, obviously we're all clueless about, you know, the path forward for Celtic and development. But it looks to me, certainly, there's nowhere for our kids to go and play. Nowhere. Nowhere good anyway, or nowhere if worthwhile. Was, if your boy was a footballer, would you would you would you let him go to the Celtic Academy? Or would you want him to go to St. Mun or Motherwell or or Dundee or any of those? You know what I mean? I know. No the answer you know, is no. Like that podcast. Let's really go for that da. Let's lean into that da. Thing. I, I, you know. The answer to Eddie is none of the above. None of the above. If if that's a level, he's I I would consider myself. No, oh, this is terrible. I'm not going to say that. I withdraw. I withdraw that. But I would hope that it'd be at a level where we might go and find him somewhere. You know, with a proven record of really developing players. I'm, I'm you know, thinking from the point of view of you know like getting them actual close to game time to real to real football. You know, you know if if you've got a kid that's talented. And, it, yeah. and it's got potential. Do you put them in the academy? St. Ninians is a brilliant school. Do you send them there and it's a, it's a good opportunity? You know, and 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 then and then maybe he does a dope and gets a, and suddenly gets spotted somebody else. Yeah, gets a chance to. Or, or does he do? I don't know, Marcus Fraser. 
and has all all the potential in the world, and, and then and then goes on and has has a decent career and and is a good player. And, but you know, or, or 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 would it be better coming through coming through a St. Murn or something like that, and then get spotted, or coming through a Motherwell like David Turnbull, and then getting brought into a club like you know like, like, like an Andy Robertson. You know, the, like is is it, is is it working that youth setup? You know, are, are we are we doing are we doing those players any good in the long term by putting them I, in selling like jerseys? Um, at, at seventeen, eighteen years of age, or should perhaps, and, and I, I don't know enough about it to say to, to argue this point convincingly. But you know, are, are we doing those boys a disservice? And it would probably be better for them to play for other clubs, and and then get regular game time playing against more developed players, and, and then coming through. You know, I mean, we have a lot of young players. You know, you look at Scotland squad just now; tons of them have come through the Celtic academy, but very few yeah. of them have played for Celtic. But then um, that's getting back to to, to Lawrence's point. Um, about Stirling Albion's full of cloggers. If you're a parent and you're looking at it, and of course I don't know enough about the Samirn Academy or or any of these other clubs' academies to be able to do it, but you might be looking thinking, right, well, at least I know the best coaches in Scotland are at Celtic. At least I know the best facilities that he could possibly train at is at Celtic. The culture from, this, from the first team manager is going to be superior at Celtic. So whilst he might not end up making it at Celtic and getting the game time at Celtic. In terms of his learning, you would expect, surely, that his learning experience, and this might get back to your point there about how many ex-Celtic Academy players who are not good enough for us but are earning a decent income across Scottish football, that might be this part. Well, at least they're getting a good... The best grounding they could get would be at Celtic. I I, I wonder Uh, as opposed... I suppose maybe the argument against what I'm saying is that I'm not seeing all the St. Murren boys that don't make it. I'm not seeing all the Morton boys that don't make it. Aye, OK, I'll take that point. Well, I wonder, just moving away from Celtic a little bit, I wonder if Scotland is the best environment for you know a really good young player. Because what I mean, if you look at, certainly, our, our recent history, you look at Farouz Islam, uh, uh, Karamoka Dembele, these kids who were bummed up so early, and you know, and it was, and it's look what happened to them. I mean, I think Dembele's making a wee bit of a comeback. I think I think he's going to get a move soon, but mm-hmm. but you know, you just kind of wonder, and the kids just can't, you know, and understandably, kids and families can't withstand all the attention. Look at Billy Gilmore, probably the best player we produced. Well, don't maybe, but even better. But Billy Gilmore got out of Scotland pretty quickly. And he's he's you know he went away to Chelsea. Obviously, not a route that you know succeeds for many people. But he went away to Chelsea, and he's finding his way. But but he went away, and he just put out of the kind of spotlight, and just got on with his business. You know, and you know if you stay in Scotland and you're really good, and you stay in Scotland, God Almighty, the, you know the spotlight is on you. Oh, this we've certainly got this great kid coming through. You know, and, I, and you just wonder, you know, that's very hard for for families. Um, to answer your question, um, um, Harry, I, I, I would, I'd stay well away from Scott. I mean, I'd get, you know, I'd go somewhere else. Who was the kid? Was it Jack Harper went to Real Madrid? As a kid. He had a decent career in Spanish football, didn't he? I think he's probably done by now. I'm not sure, but you know, but I, I, there's just something not quite small country. You know, you know, latching on to big talent too early, and and it's hard to thrive and improve when everybody, everybody. Every day is telling you how brilliant you are, and the daily records writing about you, and yeah, that that you know, get go somewhere else, and just learn your trade and develop, uh, you know, away from this, away from the spotlight. Do you think that's societal, or do you think that's the the, the unique industry that they're a product of the media, the type of people that run Scottish football, or or do you think that's that's that, that's wider than that? It's it's just. You know, you you don't live here anymore, long, so you can view it as, as with respect as an outsider. Do you think that the um, it's the it's the press that the intensity that they generate a, a perception of Scottish football? I and, think that and, yeah, and, and I think they're all morons, so they create a moronic uh, culture oh, yeah. of Scottish on. football. Or, I'm, or, not, uh, I'm not going to go along. I've been about flipping right. I've been about all right. Just, you know, it's you know, do, do we have enough? Um, do, do enough people analysing the, 
the Scottish game in, a, in, a, in an intelligent level, or is, is, it, is it over Keith Jackson's of this world, or or do you think oh, that, by that the way. you know, is, is, uh, is, is, it, is it Scottish society that's, that's damaging the potential no. young people? No, I don't. I I think it's just a product of the media, I mean, the kind of media environment we've got. I mean, you mentioned Keith Jackson. I was reading something you wrote yesterday. I mean, that guy is a literate. It's just incredible. He's still the chief sports writer of our kind of principal tabloid newspaper. I think Scottish football has never been covered in a, you know in a general sense has never been covered more intelligently than it is now. I think it's there's some great stuff. I even no, but you you Kevin McCarras go down south. You know, you 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 you. Oh well, we got so, you know, you know, you're, you're intellectuals, you're, 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 you're guys that could actually contribute something to the game on on a, on a, a, a approaching the game in, in a in a in a way that actually enhances Scottish football and, and says, no, wait a minute, don't do that, think about it, don't, don't stop being well, stop being a bowling club, you know, um, blazer, you know, and, and actually think about the game in a different way, you know, I, I think the media contributes to that, and well, you know. The only problem is it, there's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of pages to fill, and there's only two clubs to write about. That's yeah. that's got its own. I mean, that is that's a problem, really. That is a problem. But in terms of the guys working, I don't know any, any more different generation. But I, I, what I see is really, you know, pr- pretty decent. I would say this is going to be sound like sacrilege, but I I think you know, you know, Johnny McFarlane that, that runs that Rangers Review thing at the head, it's actually pretty decent. You know, and the Celtic thing that the Herald's, I mean, there's a couple of numpties in there, but there's some decent stuff, really stuff that's way above and beyond what, you know, and it looks at football at a depth that I've never I, seen I think before. Jeremy, I think Jeremy Farland's got, got a brain in his head, yeah, and, and that, that is, you're right, it is sacrilege to say that because he runs the Rangers and he's a Rangers fan. But he ran a really interesting podcast a few years ago where he was interviewing um, journalists. I think Graham Spears has moved on into a different sphere but he had something. I think Stephen McGowan's good. I think David Friel's got talent. Um, I, 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 think we're, I think we're still in the thrall of, um, you know, kick it and chase it type of journalists. And, and we need more guys that are willing to look at it a bit differently. Yeah, well, yeah, I would I would slightly disagree with that. But anyway, I mean, but, I mean, you know, as soon as I mean, just got to get rid of Keith Jackson. I mean, that's that's my <laughs> that's my uh, election manifesto. I mean, the guy is an absolute moron. I mean, sorry, no, that's take that back. Sorry, that was your word. Just no good, you know. Uh, anyway, but I think that's that's slightly the issue. Um, that you know, there's two clubs and there's a lot of pages to fill, and the spotlight is so intense, and you know, you can't you can't you know a good young player can't creep up. You know, and be a surprise. I mean, he's spotted straight away. You know, I think the best thing. I mean, terrible for for Celtic that Ben Doak. You know, like Billy Gilmore, who just got out, got out. You know, went off to a bigger, bigger environment, and you know, were allowed to get about their business in a kind of quiet way. The clubs kind of look after them, keep people away. In the case of Doak, Liverpool with Doak and Gilmore at Chelsea, and not much media attention, and they're. Both well, Gilmore already has turned into a great player, and um, and he'll do really well at Brighton. Great again, another great environment, and uh, I think Doak's going to do the business at Liverpool. By the looks of it, that's going to be that's going to be sickening when he breaks into Liverpool first team. But the, the, but you know the the end of all this is none of us can think of a simple way that you can fix it. Well, yeah, we were allowed to we were allowed to buy a, a allowed to be a, have a feeder club. We're allowed to, you know, I know Celtic did a lot of work on the looking, examining the leafering model, you know, and you know, how can we repeat that? How can we replicate that? And of course, not allowed. Maybe the, maybe we'll get to the English. Oh, <laughs> the solution is to stop being a big fish. No, no, no but board. hang on a minute. No, no, but That's hang on a minute. Stop being one of the two main clubs and and a a a a league of a league of twelve. It's if we were to go. Into the Premiership or go into a European League or something, and and as as you're saying, Lawrence, become one of many who are who are, are getting that media attention. Maybe that would start to change. Maybe the young players would stop being so intense. I mean, the, the, the thing I remember years ago, we, we spoke about, you know, in in England, um, celebrities are from TV, they're they're from films, occasionally from sports. Sports are becoming increasingly important. In Scotland, the only celebrities in Glasgow of any relevance at all are Celtic and Rangers players. 
You know, so so they so sports pages become celebrity pages, and and they become a dumb. I mean, we're talking we're talking about our left we're, we're left sided centre half who has moved club, and we're talking about his relationship rather than about his sporting ability. Aye, that was that was my fault. Sorry about that. Oh, no, no, but that but that that reflects that is that is the narrative. That is the story, and and we're all sucked into that because we're all brought up with that. You know, we're all in our fifties and we're talking about it in, in that context because that's what we've been trained to do. The, the, the difficulty it, is that our, our football players are the celebrities of this market, and if they were in a bigger market, they would be re- less relevant and allowed to develop differently. The uh, the uh, well, again, not. I mean, this is a Roger Mitchell c- kind of topic, really. But you know, I think the streaming world is so fluid; y- you just don't know. And we, you know, then why why can we not go and be part of England? And again, I'm not saying we should be part of the English Premier League, but the you know. They, England, the English Premier League doesn't doesn't need us, doesn't want it, doesn't want us because it doesn't need us. But you know, five years time, who knows what shakes loose, and there might be all sorts of you know changes. And you mentioned it earlier on, Harry, about the uh, the European Super League. I have no doubt. I mean, what stopped the European Super League was kind of basically the English Premier League, who the who lobbied uh, Boris Johnson to get on board, and you know, and that stopped it. You know, but at some point they won't be able to stop it. You know, it will just become irresistible, and the top five or top six clubs will just, you know, there won't be a, you know, a Boris Johnson figure who will who will twist and bend to the will of, you know, Richard, what's his face, uh, Scudamore, the old uh, EPL CEO, and um, and then who knows what happens after that. But uh, right now it's, um, yeah, it's not not a promise, and uh, to my view anyway, it's not a. It's not a promising uh, development environment for for young players at Celtic, sadly. But on the other side of that, you know, we were talking about like our development as a as a country and 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 the like, uh, quality coming through. And and Harry, you spoke about you know we're playing a Swiss team, so uh, Hibs are playing a Swiss team, so they'll not do well. Hibs beat them three one. Are, are we are we in danger? And again. I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm switching my arguments left, right, and centre just to try and keep conversation going. Are, are we being too harsh? Are we being too harsh? You know, it's, you know, I, I do think they'll probably get beat by Aston Villa if they get through it in the next round. But <laughs> you think? Stand just now, you know, Hearts can beat two one tonight in in Norway. That that gives them a great chance of getting through it in the next round. Um, Rangers won two one last night. Uh, I didn't think that that Swiss team had much. Rangers didn't have much more, but they did enough to beat them. Um, are we being too harsh in terms of that? Is there potential there that we could see maybe three teams, maybe four teams? Many teams I think we'll have in, in group stages in European football uh, in September. Well, we we as obviously, uh, what, if Rangers get knocked out this time, where do they go? Do they go to the playoffs of the Europa League and then if they get knocked out there, they go to the conference? No, I don't if they know. knocked out this round, they go direct into the group stages. If they get knocked out in the next round... They go direct to the group stages. So the question is, do you well, want then, them? Then we're going to have three. Round? We're going to have three right. teams in group stages. Then do you want them not? Oh, well, already. So they don't. They don't get a. They don't get the payday of having another game of football at Ibrox. Or do you want them get knocked out in the next round when they do have the payday of a game at Ibrox, but they need to play probably PSV the week before they play us? What one do you want? Oh, yeah. I'm always I'm always in favour of total humiliation. I'm always, you know, as far as they're concerned, I, I, you know. Get you him know. out, Sharon. Get him out. Yeah, get <laughs> lose three now uh, away from home and just be humiliated and be on a downer. That that that, that suits me. <laughs> that suits me for them. But but if what you're saying is correct, then that means there's going to be th- at least three Scottish teams in group stages because Aberdeen are guaranteed group stages. Yeah. Yeah. But but then getting back to what we've been discussing here, how many of Celtic Rangers, Hibs, Hearts, and Aberdeen have got a raft of young homegrown Scottish players? None. Not to my. There's a really good uh, guy. There's a good. I saw. Oh shit! I can't remember what it's called. A good pod podcast on uh, de- you know developing football in Scotland. Uh, the, it's a guy Brown. What's his fucking uh, anyway? Yeah, no, nah, we've not got much. We do not have much, and and that's the problem. And then, I mean, for me, 
the other problem with Scottish football is having a 12 team, to- having a, a, a top tier. And I know the principle of, well, it's always competitive. So you're getting people to play in a competitive environment, but it then becomes the challenge of, um, those, of, of, of a manager having the preparing, be prepared to take the risk on a young player in such a competitive environment where you've only got 12 teams and you've got such a risk that you're immediately uh, falling back. I always go on about the player that, that, um, that I once played in a, you know, round a golf with in some business golf thing. And uh, he'd been at Motherwell as a youth player and then gets into the first team at Motherwell. And it was the worst year of his life playing football because the the mature adults in the team saw the youngsters every summer, a group of youngsters come from the youth system and they are seeing people who, if those youngsters succeed, these people are struggling to pay their mortgage next year. And so they were completely unhelpful uh, to him when he broke into the first team, hated it, couldn't wait for when his contract expired to be able to chuck football. So that's, I mean, hopefully, uh, to be fair, that's a scenario that happened 15 years ago, and I would like to think things have changed. I'm not sure, because I look at these clubs and they consistently, you know, Aberdeen and Hearts have been trying to change this in the last year or two, but they've, they've actually invested in players. But principally, most of Scottish football goes and signs a 24, 23, 24 to 29 year old journeyman pro who they know what he's going to deliver. They get him on a Bosman. He comes in for a year, maybe two, and then he goes on a Bosman. And that's what the majority of our teams are filled with that standard and quality. Cut, of play. cut this main. Yes. Cut this main. That's it. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what our teams are filled with. So again, is the other issue that we need to have games that if you, or, or the ability for teams to be able to not have to win every single week. You know, that, that's the other thing for it. So um, I, I anyway. don't know what the solution is, but another, and I, I, for me, for Celtic, which is all I'm interested in, the ability for us to have another team that are a path exactly as uh, the Red Bull teams have got a path back. That, that for me, is all that matters. Yeah, and, and so far, it's not happening. So it's not happening. Uh, on uh, after that huge big ramble of stuff that's Sorry, fixed, that was shocking, you know, wasn't it? No, no, I think it was. It was oh, yeah, hey, by the way, you went to last <laughs> Sunday. You thought that was shocking? <laughs> oh, but we're all like, compared to uh, the last uh, podcast no, we did. What's that team called? What's, no, uh, there's a team that I can't remember the guy's name. I can't remember the boy's name. I mean, just what a bunch of old dads. Absolutely, but, but, uh, people uh, walking their dogs thinking this is fantastic. Jack, uh, Jack, Jack Harper's just signed for my beer. By the way. Just signed. I'll, me to it. I, was, I googled that as well to see, yes. Good luck to Jack Harper and Marbella. It is now when we interrupt the podcast to talk about shaving products. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, no, this, no. Isn't, this, isn't, this, isn't, this isn't shaving products, just isn't for us. We are the podcast, either we are the podcast for people who don't have hairy shoulders, or we are the podcast for people who really, really rock those hairy shoulders and just don't care, right? One or the other. No. No, no this male shaving programs, and then also this is the other thing that because obviously I listen to about six heart and hand podcasts a year at uh, at key moments in the season. The other thing is, do you want people to not know about your browsing history? Then I would recommend <laughs> NordVPN. NordVPN, yeah. What are you browsing? What exactly are you browsing that you don't want people to know about, mate? Anyway, there's no. Are you this is a, I was going to say, have this you been is up to no good? <laughs> that, that amazes me. Did you see the thing yesterday that appeared on on Twitter where they said fear are going to be at the game? Everybody behave. <laughs> and so like, right. Instead of you know how we're all decent human beings, let's just all be decent human beings. We're getting watched. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, that's not how it works. Be a good person. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was just going to say, uh, hey, we this is too. This is the uh, Patreon edition, so we don't have to do adverts. We're getting a fiver for well, it. Well, if you, uh, as I said last week, if you're listening to this on Amazon Prime, it's uh, it's ad free because that's all I'm hearing <laughs> on every podcast at the moment. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Yes, this this is a Patreon edition, and and if you're listening to it just now, you do owe us. Is it five pounds a week? Is it what, what, what are we charging uh, now for this? I uh, I pay I pay two dollars ninety nine cents for my Heart and Hand subscription. 
Oh, two dollars ninety nine cents a month. Honestly, what well, what is it? They, what is it they provide that? I mean, what they get beat? I download it. I watch his wee sad face on YouTube. I don't know how much he makes out of that, but it's well worth it. Um, but what, what else do they give you that makes it worthwhile? Uh there's. I say. I mean, I'm not. This is not. I cannot believe this. Uh, yeah, we're going to do an advert for Patreon for Heart and Hand. Go for it. Right, no. But do you know what it is? <laughs> right. Do you know what? There are podcasts who would refuse to do this because we'd never talk about them and we'd never promote them. Who cares? My, right. my wife and son, are. And they'll go to their grave saying that I would actually rather Rangers lose than Celtic win. Because... <laughs> 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 We'll be in the car on, on Saturday with Pascal Marmot uh, and Niles in the car. And he's like, oh, shit. We're going to have to spend all day tomorrow listening to Rangers podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't wrong. <laughs> uh, anyway, there you go. So, yeah. 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 There's, oh, the other one, I, and I subscribe. I will give an ad, but uh, Graham Spears has got a podcast. Uh, you know, he's got some shy guests on sometimes, Eddie, but occasionally. Every other week he's got Harry Brady, and I'm like, I'm not listening. Oh, you, you know, I get enough text uh, off him as it is, but it's the same old nonsense. Uh, but, uh, he, so he, I subscribe he just, to that. He, he just says that whenever I'm on, he gets an extra grand uh, from new subscribers <laughs> on it, and, and he splits it 50 50, so that's why I'm on it uh, so much. <laughs> What is, anyway, it, no. what is it you actually discuss on there that you don't discuss everywhere else? Do you keep your good stuff back for Graham Spears <laughs> podcast, Harry? Is this, no, is this just for a pledge? Is I, I tell any you, old nonsense? I tell, I tell you're, you what... You're, you're phoning this in. Look, you're actually reading a book while you're reading this. I tell you what the challenge is of going on Graham Spears podcast that... Um, that you, you and I, this, you, you, me and somebody else discussed in a WhatsApp message earlier on today is twice now I've been on with a Rangers guy. Oh, he's an absolute <laughs> numpty, that boy. And the difficulty is not going... Oh. Well, the, the difficulty is not going, well, of course, that's the new Rangers that you support. And oh. <laughs> you have to... Tr- the difficulty is being balanced and even. That is the biggest challenge of going on it. Why? You know, that thing that we... That? Uh, well, you, you, you know... You can be yourself. Oh, because it's that thing of when you bump in a Rangers fan at this just now, and it's somebody you don't know very oh, well, and, you're, ha- thing, yes, yes, and yes. you're having to say, "Oh well, you know, it's just one game." <laughs> because oh, you're trying to be I was, I was work, right? I was back at work on Tuesday, um, just 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 passing, just dropped in, uh, and and like guy came in, cracking guy, they, they, you know, they, they, like folk want to listen to the podcast and go, oh, they're all this and they're all that. No, they're no. You know they're no. I know they're no. Right? There are guys that just go and support their team and they're decent guys and you'd rather spend time with them than some of the Celtic fans, you know. And and it was like, all right. And they start talking. You don't talk about football because you don't want to do that to them. So they start talking about football and you're like, ah, it's early days. You never know. You know, nothing's won or lost in August. But really what you're thinking is, yous are gobbed. <laughs> yous are absolutely gobbed. <laughs> but, yeah, you're, you're trying you not to go because they're good people. You're trying not to go. I don't really pay that much attention, but the one thing I have noticed is you've signed a whole host of six foot plus guys who oh, to- who scored team. some like six goals in their lifetime as a career. You're obviously going to be playing hoofball under on, under Beal. Who? Oh, great thing I heard today um, when Beal. Um, you know how Beal said, not this most recent time, but the time before, just be, when he was at QPR, just before he went to Rangers, he'd been interviewed for the Wolves job and knocked it back. So the brilliant bit of gossip I heard today was actually he completely mucked up the the Wolves interview, yeah. knew he'd mucked it up, so he got his agent to say, oh, he's knocked it back, and Wolves thought, if that's what you want to say, that's no scary. That, that's, that makes complete sense, because that story... I mean, the idea that he would have been offered the Wolves job and turned it down is utter mince. It just, and no level does that make any sense. So co- complete fiction, clearly. And that would, uh, I've always thought that. And that would, that would, would confirm it. I'm sorry. I would just like, I would just like to say, I think that's all libelous. And I have no part of this particular conversation if a lawyer is listening in. Oh, really? Carry on, sorry. Well, as, somebody, as the person describing that said to me, but it doesn't bother me because it means that they've got Arthur Daly running their team. Oh, aye. It, it's, it's, see, the thing about it is, right, okay, let's go into talking about them a wee bit, but see before they sing them, 
the 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 follow follow uh, poll for who they wanted, they didn't want him. And then seeing it became increasingly clear they were getting him, then the votes started to increase for who they want, and 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 they follow that story and they change their views on the basis of what what narrative actually suits them to sound good. But it's becoming increasingly clear that isn't a deep reservoir of goodwill for him. No, there isn't. If it, if it doesn't go well for him early, see if he doesn't get a really convincing result against us in the first game of the season. He's, he's a dead man walking. He might not go in the immediate, you know, the immediate future, but he's not going to be able to recover from it the same way Van Bronckhorst couldn't recover from it. You know, it's, it, it became increasingly clear that he wasn't he wasn't going to be able to survive, and winning games wasn't going to be enough. I mean, Van Bronckhorst was a guy that took them to a European final, and it wasn't enough. Bill, the uh, is no, as he's a, not going to cope. As a subscriber, at heart in hand, I can confirm that there is not a deep pool of uh, goodwill for him. If if they get knocked out, especially by the dinner napkin crowd from Switzerland, um. The the and then they don't get a result against us. I think he he's done. And his problem is because he's bullshit bingo. He says too many words, and so the problem with that oh. is there's just too many words that he said out there that when they want to turn against him, it will be too easy. That you know the, the you know that thing about Trump. There's 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 always a tweet principle. They will be able to go and find because of the amount of verbiage that he has spouted out, they'll be able to go and find stuff to then start beating them with it. And they have proved, with Warburton being the greatest thing since sliced bread, ha, ha, ha. Um, Future England manager. Yeah, exactly. And then um, and Van Bronckers getting to European final and uh, Cachinha, they are not slow to turn uh, vitriorically on their manager. Because so. what they're struggling with is the, the, the new reality, which is in a level playing field, when they are not uh, EBTing left, right and centre, when they're not overspending to the extent that their club actually dies, they cannot compete with us. Because even at its most basic level, we've got 15,000 more people every week paying 20, 30, whatever it is, pound a ticket, which means we will always be further ahead of them. Even if they do everything exactly the same as us, we will always be ahead of them. And if we're always ahead of them, we'll get into the Champions League and then we will jump to the next level because the amount of money we'll get for the Champions League. I don't see how short of us, and by the way, this could well be the um, uh, saluting his way to the to the, to the the league title statements that, that, that comes back to haunt us, but I don't understand how they can ever become the team that they have in their mind that they are, given the financial circumstance they find themselves in and where they find themselves in the hierarchy of, of international football now, based on where we are. But don't forget, once we don't win one title, we will fold like a pack of cards. But funnily enough, we didn't. You know, the, I, the, 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 one, know. the one defeat is, again, a battle of Man City. The COVID year, it wasn't great. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. It was pretty sore. But it was just one season. And then we go back to, you know, normal service has been resumed. And and things things are looking like, you know, this season we have one of the best managers in the country. We'll get we'll get and by that I mean I don't know uh, the UK, right? We've got one of the best managers in the UK. Oh, the UK, Eddie. I know, I know, I know. I said that. I said that. I know. I know. I, just, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's a fair sense of labour as well, and that that goes back to all the base between me and you, right? But um, anyway, that's a conversation we're not Unionist lucky. Yeah. Hey. Who me or him? <laughs> um, he's turned into a unionist. Aye. A unionist lick spittle. <laughs> well, what, you, well, just like I've been for my whole life, is that right? Because because it's it's a because there'll be do you know there'll be a cultist pile on now that you've you've, you've referred to the country as the UK. But hey, there's know, nobody listening know, at this stage. There's nobody listening, and my credibility is not being you, Harry. It's been totally under me. It's a consequence. <laughs> That's why this podcast succeeds because I'm not you. If you've <laughs> listened this far. Use the code Unionist Lickspittle for your free Patreon three month subscription. Right. Right. We should wrap this up. Right. Well, we can get on to the game of the weekend. 
The SNP, I have absolutely... No, I'll not say that. <laughs> no, just yeah. say it in every tweet every week. I just, I'll just use that in every tweet that I text that I send you. Yes. Yeah, but, um, no, anyway. Anyway, right, the, okay. The, you carry on with <laughs> Let, let's get, let, I, would, I would actually edit it, but I know you don't listen to any of that at all. No, my mother-in-law. Take my mother-in-law, please. Anyway, let's get on to um, Sunday. We are away to Aberdeen. Um, uh, the expectations, and maybe there still will be, uh, they'd spent a bit of money and they brought players in. Barry Robson uh, done well at the end of last season, and then they went and drew it at Livingston. But of course, the plastic pitch, anybody can have a bad result in the plastic pitch. So, yeah. uh, Lawrence, even the best teams. Yep. Even the best teams. What What is your expectations for uh, for Sunday away at Pataudry? Well, I think we'll be better than we were last weekend because they'll have another week to work on the players. Um, I would expect a few changes. Um, in my dream scenario, uh, Hatati has a change of heart. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but I would like to see him back. Um, but expect not. I would expect. I would. I, I would imagine. Do you think? Hattani I think he, away? I, he's away. I think he's away. I think he's. I think he was offered a new deal in the middle of last season, January, February, or something like that. Turned it down. Didn't want to do it. And I guess I, I'm guessing. I'm no. I'm you. You know, we're Celtic dads, so we're usually in the know. But on this occasion, uh, we're not. I'm guessing that he, when uh, Kyogo and uh, Maeda were offered new deals, he was offered something along the same lines, and they, they said yes, and he said no. I think he's out. I mean, I think I'm not, I mean, again, no great insight, but I suspect that uh, David Turnbull isn't very much a Brendan Rogers type player. But uh, he still picked Turnbull again ahead of Hitati last weekend. So I think that says everything. Uh, that's a shame. I would, wouldn't be surprised to see Bernabeu come in uh, ahead of Taylor this weekend. Um, I think really? we'll have the same centre-halves. I do. I really do. Oh, I wonder... Uh, I just don't think... Yeah, Taylor looked like... Not like I'm not going to say a headless chicken, and he always do a turn. But, uh, you know, uh, he looked a bit lost to me on Sunday in that new system. You know, he didn't even really know what, what he was meant to be doing. Uh, again, difficult when you played an entire season one way, now you've been asked to play another way. Uh, I, I, I mean, I thought Rolson was pretty bad. You know, I wouldn't. I would imagine that Iwata, I was surprised that Iwata didn't get the start. Uh, or Tomoki, as the, I don't know what... Um, I think he might get a, 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 a right back, maybe, hopefully. Um, uh, I guess it will be... I mean, after that, the front three, I think, is a stick on. I mean, I think that's just... I mean, we'll, you know, we talked earlier about... You know, when we get into the guts of the season, I think that's that's our first pick. Uh, front three is uh, is Abada, uh, Kyogo, and Maeda. And uh, the midfield will be McGregor and O'Reilly, I guess. And there's, there's that one spot, uh, I guess Turnbull. But uh, and I say in the dream scenario, Hatati. I, I mean, it's all we've done pretty well up there in recent years. Uh, I, I don't see any reason for that to change. I have really paid. More. Have they signed any good players, Harry Aberdeen? They've signed players. I couldn't tell if they're any good or not. Yeah, I mean, not interested. Uh, that's really this is for what a shambles of a podcast. This is <laughs> Eddie. Talk us through the Aberdeen. What's uh, what's Barry Robson's preferred formation and lineup? So, who are we playing on Sunday? Are we Sunday? <laughs> is it Saturday? I mean, this is the point I made at the start. What are we doing this for? Wait, I'm like, no, wait, wait, anyway. I've done my work this week. I thought I'd done quite well. Um, clearly not. Um, one I was. Really unhappy, but right. So we're playing Aberdeen. They're the ones in red, aren't they? Oh, they are the ones see. in red. We have they have signed Esther Sokla for three hundred and fifty grand. They have signed Slobodan Rubicic, a centre half for two hundred and thirty grand. Nicky Devlin from Livingston, right back. Leighton Clarkson, I think, is on loan from Liverpool. Graham Shinney is still on loan from Wigan. Uh, Ross Doohan from a Celtic keeper uh, they signed him uh, Rhys Williams on loan from Liverpool or Dida Dia whatever uh, on loan from Beersheva uh, that seems to be the gist of who they've got so there you go there's the transfers in for Aberdeen yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, what I would say the only thing I do think is that I like Barry Robson right and I want him beat 
on this weekend. But I'd like to see Barry Robson do well because he, he was a good Celtic player. He, he came in, he worked hard, did his job, he, um, cemented Castelli uh, when he needed it, and, and that was a tackle that pretty much won us the league, right? So, so there's a lot of positives there. Uh, I hope he does really, really well, Aberdeen, just not this weekend. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that you're saying that you perhaps would change. Do you don't think Ralston was just like looked a bit rusty, having been out of games for a wee while? You know, I, I know what you're saying about the left, the fullbacks. You know, the full fullbacks are being asked to do a different job this season than they were last yeah. season. But you know, it's, it's, does he not need games and not need time? Uh, uh, Alistair Johnson is obviously the first choice right back. And, and By the way, I, I, I wonder, I, I wonder if. Um, the Spurs don't have a quality right back, I don't think. And in the fullness of time, I wonder if we might be under a bit of pressure for somebody that wants to come and take him away because I think that guy could absolutely play in English League. But I, I, do you not think Ralston I mean, needs games? Uh, well, I, I watched played a lot of the preseason games, didn't he? I mean, I thought he would, I mean, that was a kind of precursor to him coming in. I'd also heard that Rogers really liked him. I, I was quite surprised when he didn't get a start. Uh, I'd also heard that uh, again. I'm sure this is just a scurrilous rumor that Johnson's injury was a bit worse than we're being led to believe. I mean, there's no sign of him. I mean, uh, Carter Vickers is back. I uh, uh, pretty much on schedule. Uh, Johnson. He played, for, he played for Canada, and I think that's what exacerbated the injury. Yeah, well, you know, so he's. I mean, there's no sign. There's no sign of him in any pictures from training. Uh, there's no chat about him by starting back training. Nothing. Um, so that's kind of quite worrying because I think he's a very important player. He's also the kind of fullback that Rogers, I think he struggled. You know, he did struggle, right? but I think he, you know, he took a while and he didn't quite get it. Uh, you know, to to adapt to, to the Ange kind of what Ange was looking for in a fullback. He, he's my more a traditional kind of d- down the wing type fullback, more defensive minded. Um, so I think he would be perfect for Rogers. Rogers will like him when he comes back. But as I say, no sign. Um, I wonder, uh, you know, well, I don't think we'll get, a, again, talking of bringing players in, a new goalkeeper, I think, was certainly due. I wonder, uh, we won't have a new goalkeeper by Sunday, um, I believe. But, you know something, Harry, who we're looking at? Well, I don't think it's any, it's been everywhere, hasn't it? The, uh, uh, the, 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 the Swedish uh, centre-half. The other thing... In the, no, no, I'm talking about goalkeepers. Well, goalkeepers, it's the, yeah, the Croatian, Croatian guy. Croatian guy. Yeah. Uh, who he was? Their game was postponed midweek uh, because AK Athens had a, had a fan stabbed and killed. Um, so uh, the talk is that if if and when they get knocked out of Europe, that's when they would be prepared to sell him, and we'd be able to get him. Um, interesting for me about you talk about Awata or Tomoki as he now seems to be, um, and Hitati were both at fault in the pre-season friendly in the Forest testimonial for goals, directly at fault for goals, and both of them were dropped for the game against uh, Ross County on on Saturday. So maybe that, that was a part to play in it. Um, that, <laughs> um, ben, ben, you just thought, you're too careless, I need to work on you a bit more before you're playing first-team football. I think well, I stayed I think, harsh. Yeah. On, I think I stayed harsh on the, on Iwata. And, and I, you know, first impressions, I like to look at him. But He's been asked to play right back. He's been asked to play centre half. He's been asked to play defensive mid. We signed him as a defensive mid. He was player of the year in Japan. And we're, we're treating him like Peter Grant when, when we didn't really want Peter Grant in the team. We've shifted him right back. We've shifted him defensive mid. But we need to give that guy a chance to play in a set position to see what he can. I have absolutely no idea if that guy is good or not. And he's been with us for six months. We've not given him a proper run. If we're going to play two defensive mids moving forward, then I would like to see him alongside McGregor just to see, is he good enough, is he not good enough? And maybe the, maybe the cup game in command is the time to do it. But I, we, we can't judge that, that guy's ability or otherwise because we've asked him to play our position so many times. You know, so it, it makes it dead difficult to decide what do we do next with him? You know, if, if we want to spend money on these guys and bring them over, then we need to actually give them a chance to show what they're capable of. And, and I'm, I'm not convinced we've done that with that guy yet. No, I, I think I, I, he's, not Mike, he's not Mike Galloway. Do you know what I mean? No, I, I think Awata. I, I, I find it him and uh, Kobayashi. The only thing I could think of in, in how little game time Ange was giving them. My initial thought was, and you know, it's a massive change of culture to go from Japan across here. And I'd wondered if maybe Ange just thought, "I've got the luxury, and they need it as well. I'm going to give them time to settle into 
living in Scotland before they played or, too much football. Um, who's, but but who's I think, agency? Maybe there's a question to be asked there. He says raising an arts brow. Oh, don't get started. Yeah, mm. uh, I see. If, if, it's uh, all rubber chins. If you could cross Kobe Ashi with Carl Starfield, I think you'd have a hell of a centre half. I think Kobe Ashi has a very nice left foot, a really cultured left foot, but he's just too lightweight to be playing centre half for us. You're Sorry, you're spot, you're spot on. I think he's a good footballer, but maybe maybe he could be converted I, I think he's, I think to a left back. For him. Maybe he could be converted you know to a left back. Mm, don't think he's uh, he's not robust enough for that, and he's not um, he's too lightweight. Sorry, I mean, I don't, he doesn't you know, the Tokyo go back to Japan is 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 on loan. I'd much rather he, he goes to a club in Scotland on loan, and you know, oh, does, you put him through that. Or, now, I think I think he needs he needs a year of getting knocked about by rough centre forwards. Look, like, oh, who's the guy? Who's the guy? Someone Curtis Main. You know, that type of that type of centre forward, you know, and, and just can a guy do it or can he not do it? Because you're right, he's got football in him. You know how to find a pass. Yeah. We'll see. Anyway, score for Saturday, because this is going to be a two hour bumper edition. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> By the way, actually I forgot about um uh Odin Tiago home. I mean he might get a game. He looked pretty decent when he came on. I I, I like I liked I liked what I, what I saw him, and I know that uh, people like people at Celtic have liked what they've seen on of him. Oh, you know, do you? So you tell us you're in the know. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> yes. No, I'm not in the know, but I do know someone who's told me that people in Celtic like him. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, it looks, well, it looks like he can see. receive a ball really well. It, it yeah. just it looks natural, yeah. and, and the way you know his, his body's open, to receive a ball is ready for his pass. The problem I've got with them is he gave himself the name Tiago. There go. <laughs> right now, what sort of nutter names that you know and gets that you know I don't know whatever it is in Norway, did pole or whatever it is, right? But to rename himself after a player and wants to be known by that name when you've got the name Odin, right? He's, by the way, and, and some of his tweets are, are dubious as well, but that's a conversation with an oddity, right? But, um, that then takes us into the grounds of, you know, Labour Party and, and you know, Lawrence's Wall Street and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, that, that's all to other side. But why is he naming himself Tiago? That's dubious, is it not? He's, he's a nutcase. <sighs> I think it's a nutcase. It's for a watching, but it's a crack. For the watching. For the right, watching. Uh, predicted, score, score predictions. Uh, actually, I think this might be a wee bit tight. I, I think, again, we're still trying to settle in. Uh, I think we might just nick it 2-1. There you go. That's, a, that's the least decisive scoreline I've ever predicted in my entire life on any podcast. Eddie? I can't remember if you gave one a score last week, so uh, three days ago, so just give us I one. Did, I think I said 3-1. But I'll now take one now if it's going. But I think I said three one. All right. Okay. I will leave it before, at that. Bef- before yes. we stop, though, no, there will no. be. No, no. Be... <laughs> Did you just say? Oh no! As <laughs> <laughs> as a podcast compatriot, there. <laughs> you know, like, if I think that the listeners feel, oh, if you want to be there, like, oh, he's still bloody like, talking. Oh no. <laughs> You know, he's on a podcast and he's talking. Well, he know he's sharp. Oh, I go to my beds. Um, right. What's happening with By The Minute podcast? Uh, I think we've chucked it. Oh, no. Surely No, uh, nah, I think so. I, I, I can't be arsed, to be honest. What, what the, uh, Wait, who is Chris going to tell everybody that he's writing there all wrong? Wait, where is he going to do that? I know, that's right. All those Patreon you know what? subscribers. <laughs> I know what we're going to do. They're taking the money every spending. single month and they're getting know, nothing. It's brilliant. Back. It's the biggest scam ever. It's the best you know business what? model ever. <laughs> do you know what? See when... Every six months they get sent a picture of you in a T-shirt. <laughs> To, to be honest, right after Remy said that uh, Posta Cogley was a terrible appointment, I didn't have the heart to put him on the air again after that. That was just, 
it was just too much. And then he said Callum McGregor was rubbish, and I just thought, oh, come on. Yeah. So are you willing so, to transfer him to us? Uh, you can certainly have him, that's for so, sure. Could we end the, up uh, with like, like a box midfield with the four of us? Two <laughs> one. The, uh, box midfield. Somebody's paying attention to modern football. No. I'm gonna. What I'm doing is I'm gonna. I'm gonna loan him out to uh, a club in Austria for his development. See, <laughs> is it, he is a young player with full of potential. You're right, <laughs> Harry. What, what What was the thing in 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 Roy of the Rovers where there was players that could play? They were mercenaries. That that that, that you could just you could just buy them to play for like two three games and stuff like that. Is that what it's like? You can just pick them in, drop them in. He just plays for three games, move on to the next one. Does he get a choice in this, or does he have to do it? No. you tell him to do it? Uh, I think I don't think you can tell him to do it, really. Uh, is, he, is he still contracted to, to buy them in? Uh, he's still contracted. No, he is not. No, he's a, he's a free agent now. He is the, uh, uh, I was going to say Harry Kane. No, who's out, who's out of, uh, he's the Ryan Kent. I should have signed him up on a long-term deal a couple of years ago, but I just let him run down. I could have. Could have sold him to you lot for about twenty five million, uh, but so, no, he's, so he's, what we're doing. I'll be, be folding by the minute into the Celtic Underground podcast. Is that a manager? Oh, well, I, I, I mean, I mean, obviously, we'd have to get some corporate lawyers involved. I have no idea, uh, but we'll discuss that on the next four hour is it, podcast. Is it like, <laughs> like Inverness Cali, where basically it's going to be called <laughs> Celtic Underground Min? Or something like that. We just have a tiny <laughs> Celtic Underground effort. by the minute. No, no, it'll be called by the Celtic Underground. <laughs> Remember, like the spit and image Celtic Daz, spit and image joke. Uh, the David Owen and Margaret Thatcher will call it, well, where's the two parties? We'll call it, you know, Conservative from ours and Party from Social Democrat Party. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah, anyway, we'll take the podcast that was a... off your bit, right? And we'll take right, the Celtic okay. Underground off our bit. <laughs> And they were, that sounds great. I don't, don't think anybody will be listening to that podcast. Just like there's now nobody listening to this. No, right. no, oh, the people I, have got this I, far. They, they, they're, they're desperately in Patreon putting in Unionist Licks bit all to try and get their money off for the subscription. <laughs> but <laughs> but I not realising. I just believe I've got more in common with a working class guy in Liverpool than I have with anybody from Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, oh God, the pile on you're gonna get now. Right. Right, I think I, I think block, right. block, 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 block. <laughs> I have I've been I've been trying to end this podcast for about half an hour and I'm not even the host. <laughs> Don't you think it's great though that, that Twitter eventually will, will will end completely and there'll be no such thing as Twitter anymore and we'll not have to put up with all that crap. And Ex- we can just talk like this without any feedback at all. Well, That'll you could always, you could always just delete your Twitter account. I, I don't know something unique <laughs> like that. Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Though, yeah, um, into X. Anyway, final thing, final thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a, have you seen the Todd Cantwell Instagram post? No, I have. Of course, you're not. You're not on Instagram. I, I on have. With well, the eyebrows, the eyebrow have filter, seen, no, uh, the, the eyelashes. Have you seen I, the Todd Cantwell eyelashes? I have. They're lovely. I Don't have. you think they're lovely? Oh, absolutely he's just astonishing. It's, it's he so is. good. Oh, by the way, sorry, uh, Harry, did you see the oh, tackle? God. Obviously, the this, this serviette boy wasn't having any of his pish either. See the tackle that got him sent off? Oh, yes. absolute. I mean, he was <laughs> absolutely brilliant. So, and, and then and then when Goldson finally for ham, for touching the ball with his arm and hand in, in the penalty box, because... And and uh, on Rangers TV, they're saying, I've seen them given. Well, no, you've not. Where have you seen them given? Because it's not yeah, been I... domestic football that you've seen. Them... Anyway, enough of that. We're yeah. going for a, a victory over Aberdeen. And uh, if you're still listening, Unionist Lips. And, and, uh, yes. Harry's away to go and do a podcast with Graham Spears, so he has to get off now. <laughs> <laughs> as quick as he can. To earn 50 quid for his podcast. Right, go and wrap us up, Frank. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I could do it. Don't, don't, I, don't, I, don't. <laughs> Take my mother in law. Anyway, uh, enough of me. That was me, Harry Brady, saying goodnight to Eddie Pearson and Lawrence Donegan. Good night, guys. Thank fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I quite enjoyed it. A 
quite enjoyed it too. I hope you did as well. Anyway, this is me, Harry Brady. That was Eddie Pearson, Lawrence Dorrigan. This is the By the Celtic Underground podcast. And this is me saying good night and God bless. Good night. Spacecraft and an alien standing at the door. He was dressed just like Hank Williams. He had a Stetson hat and eyes like a cat. And I was on my knees praying to the Lord. I said, Mr. Spaceman, please don't abduct me. Take me away in your craft and fuck me. I'm just a poor, unfortunate country boy. He said, so, something amiss. I was only taking a piss out of the back. Before I headed home But why don't you and I have a sing-song You produce